listening to the Generation Now podcast. Generation Now podcast. Where we talk all things change and to those who are creating it. You can't help the generation you were born into, but you can choose to be part of the one that's making a difference and making it now. Now, here's your host, PJ at the Point. Hey guys, what's up? I am super pumped and excited for you guys to be here um, with us. Um, I'm really ecstatic. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, my name is Pastor Jonathan, and uh, this is the Generation Now podcast. And again, I'm, I'm just so excited for us to be able to bring this to you um, today, especially since I have a special guest with me. Uh, most of you already know who this is, but let's go ahead and uh, check it out. There it is. Jordan Phillips of Apollo LTD. Hey, man, what's up, brother? You good? I'm good. How are you guys? Man, I am doing fantastic. You know, like I said, I spent a little bit too much time trying to get this thing set up. So I I, uh, apologize about that. Taking up so much of your time this morning. Um, No, man. I'm I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, I'm just going to pull this up real quick and make sure that we are going as far as volume because I can hear you. You can hear me. Man, sometimes Facebook is just not the best as far as other people. Oh, it's working. Look at that, man. I, I actually know what I'm doing uh, 20% of the time. You're a genius. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. a genius. <laughs> Technical wizard. Oh, man, dude. To, to, to be to be perfectly honest, like um, it took me about four hours the other night to get set up, right? And um, because YouTube... Not everyone knows, like, as far as what they're talking about on YouTube, right? So um, I- I'm yeah. watching all these tutorials, you know, doing all this stuff, and-, and-, and they have, like, the same equipment, and everyone's like, oh, you're a genius, and I do it, and I'm like, oh, man, you're really dumb. Like, this is not working. And so yeah. then I found a way to do it. Literally nothing that had to do with any of the posts that I've been, like, researching or looking at for, like, four hours. And so I'm like, what in the world is going on? And so now yeah. today I, I got it set up. I got you added and I did all that in like 15 minutes. The other night it took me like till about one thirty in the morning. Oh, I, I know. S- well, I, I can relate, man. I, we, I do a lot of production, music production. And so it's very similar, especially during these times where we're still doing co-writes and we're still doing production work for other artists and you have to stream it all and you have to get the audio all synced up. I mean, it's, it's a mess. So I get it. Yeah. It's like technology is awesome when it works, when it, when it works, right? Yes, like exactly. if it's not working, then it's probably not the best. And then you hear someone else, <sighs> you know, and, and I don't know about you, but for me, I always see these like, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll like go to a thread, right. Of, Cause what we're all on message boards and, you know, threads and stuff, trying to sort things out. And one of the funny things is, is that other people's problems, it's always like, turn it off, turn it on, wait three seconds, and it works. I've always already done that. Yeah. <laughs> so my wife works in IT. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and she, her, her, like, it's now an inside joke with Katie and I, because if I have something that's not working, I'll always go to my wife and be like, why the heck isn't this working? Because, and she said, she always asks, she, she always goes, have you rebooted the device? I'm like, yes, I've rebooted the device. But so, but in, in her defense, she deals with people that are like, my internet doesn't work. And she's like, well, is the ethernet plugged into the back of the router? And they're like, well, no, I didn't know that was, that had to do with the internet. You know? Right. She's like, well, but yeah, I'm always like, yes, I rebooted the device. Uh, yeah, you don't was, need to ask me that question. 17 times I've rebooted this thing. It still does not work. It's like, man, I can't get my car to start. Okay, have you turned the key? Oh, I didn't I'm think about that. that. Like, oh, I, I bet that's it. And then they go and sit in their car, turn the key, and lo and behold, oh, hey, look, it works. And it's just like, <clears throat> okay, awesome, great job. So here we are. Dude, first of all, I just want to say that I am, like, honored for you to be here, take the time to do, uh, you know, actually just uh, interact with us as a church and also me personally. Uh, and also to uh, say, dude, you crushed the show that you had at our <laughs> church. Thanks, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. You, you're, you guys are very kind. We enjoyed being with y'all. So it was a it, lot of fun. If you want to know something funny, 
uh, so I said, uh, hey, guys, I'm going to be doing um, an interview podcast with Apollo LTD, right? And I literally, dude, this is no exaggeration. How'd you pull that off? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. That's hilarious. I'm like, I don't know if you're awesome or if I'm just terrible. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable with either one of those. <laughs> Let's just say uh, it, uh, sometimes it only just takes a, a DM on Instagram to make make things happen. <laughs> yeah. And, hey, and isn't it funny that like that's the world that we live in? Like, what did you do? Well, I asked. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like that was it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? He says, no. Totally. Don't care. You know. I'll, totally. You know. Um, so, I love doing, I, I love doing this kind of stuff, man. As long as, you know, I mean, when, when I know that I've got the, the, the time to be able to do it, that's the only reason why I wouldn't. So I love doing this stuff, man. So privileged to be on here. Awesome. Well, let, let, let me ask you this. Um, so obviously we're all in, you know, a quarantine season. I've been out of, um, church. We actually had our first, uh, and it wasn't even official meeting, but in-house meeting, uh, with the students last night, you know, because of this whole COVID thing. Um, yeah. How do you as a band uh, and how do you, and how do you as a songwriter, um, you know, handle this? I mean, I mean, just the situation. Yeah. Well, I, I can first, let me start first with, it's not ideal. It's not ideal for anybody. Um, it, it presents challenges for sure. Um you know, Adam um, and I live literally a football field away from one another. We live, he lives one street over. Um, but for the first, especially for the, like the first month of, of quarantine, we were, we were like, uh, ah, let's just be, we're going to be, you know, even though we've been, you know, Adam and I around each other every day. So we're like, look, if I had it, you've got it. And if you've got it, your wife has it, you know, but we're like, We've been healthy, praise God. Um, but we're like, hey, let's just, everybody's quarantining, let's quarantine. So for about three weeks, four weeks, um, we, we quarantined off um, and we would just be doing what we're doing right now. And we would actually throw up Zoom and um, have some phones and our computer, you know, our, our cameras on our, our, our computers going and we would write from our houses. Um, and we did that for probably a month, you know, or maybe a little bit more. Um, and it's obviously not ideal. You just figure out pragmatically how to get things done, you know. So I, I have the studio that we work out of um, is in I, – I have one in my backyard. So I kind of come out here. Adam's in his little home studio. And we just kind of do our best, you know. Yeah, crazy, so though. pretty much like the rest of us. It's like, how, yeah, how, I mean, that's the thing. It's like you, you don't really have much choice, do you? I mean, it's like, well, I guess we're just going to Zoom and uh, a lot of emailing files, musical files back and forth, and a lot of voice memos and a lot of just trying to figure it out as we go. We're all kind of ad libbing here. Yeah, man, I had lib. I, I know that. See, like in, in, in the pastoral world, a lot of people will, um, you know, like ask us questions about like, hey, how in the world are you um, handling this, you know, and whatnot. And uh, it's one of those things where, um, you know, people are like, well, wh what are you doing? What are you doing? As if there's an expert for this time, right? And honestly, right. like there's no such thing. I'm like, hey, bro, let, let, let me just let you know this. Um, that, uh, no one knows, you know, yeah. no, like no one really knows. Um, one of the things that I've just been advising, um, people to do is do the best that you can right now. And that's it because the experts right now are not experts on this. You know, yeah. there's no way for us yeah. to really be able to tell or know. Um, and, yeah. and, and so that, and so that's one no. of the things that I'm like, I'm not confident in even being able to give someone an answer on what to do. Yeah. No, I mean, we, and we've been in the same boat, you know, we've a lot of people here in Nashville, you know, we're still writing and we're working on a, a record. Actually, we're very thankful that we have that to work on, but 
rights. Yeah, I mean, we're doing we're doing Skype rights and Zoom co rights and stuff, and it's like. <sighs> On one level, it's practical, and then on the other level, you're just like, oh, I just want to be in the same room as people again. But yeah, like you're saying, there's just no, there's no handbook on this. I mean, and we're trying to create one as we go, and so we're all trying to balance what responsibility is like with pragmatism and practicality, you know. And and it's like, well, if I can write a song from home, maybe we should for a little while, right? And then you know, and it seems like now slowly we're we're getting back to life and. Um, and, and we're going to move on but yeah, I mean, it's just, that's, that's been, I think the, the most difficult thing, my, from my vantage point for just us collectively as a people and culture is there not being a handbook and really being forced to hold on to, well, not being able to hold on to certainty. Like you said, it's like, what, what's going on? I am not quite sure, but right let's just err on the side of being safe for a little while. And, uh, that's hard for people. So, and hard for me. Well, yeah. And you know, then obviously there's that, that struggle of, you know, so do we act like that out of precaution, we're just going to do nothing or do we do the opposite and just like, just punch the gas or do we, Mm -hmm. you you know what I'm saying? It's like, like, what in the world can we do? And one of my things has been, um, you know, with this specifically, it, get better at something during this time. You, you know, yeah. in, in improve some aspect of your life. Um, yeah. And so one of the things that I've been doing is video production. And I've been hearing and getting messages that they can hear you perfectly. They can't hear me at all. Uh, so we're just going to roll with it. And I'll post the audio at the end of this thing. And then that'll be it. But... Um, one of the, are they not getting my audio now? No, they're getting your audio. They're not getting mine. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I'll be like, Hey, thanks for watching. Don't watch it. Whatever. I'll post it. That's the reason why I always do, uh, um, an audio recording as well. Right. You know, Uh, um, but, but but one of the things that, um, um, you you know, like, like for me was, you know, this video um, production, I'm like, I kind of have a little bit of a background in audio, right? I've done podcasts and done things. Uh, then I started shooting video and now I've kind of like brought the two together. Um, and now I'm doing like more than just regular production and stuff, you know, with, with this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but that's one of the things that I've been encouraging my students is, you know, what, <coughs> like do like what, 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 what are you right now looking at that you could vastly improve? And what couldn't you do it and start a good habit now to where whenever you're out of this, that you can continue improving, you know, on that, uh, you know, new skill. Um, So back to Apollo and and, and you and uh, so how how did you guys meet? Because I found it interesting Mm -hmm. that you guys have been in other bands besides this band, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, So a few years ago, I moved to Nashville. Um, and I went to college. I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and it seemed like a good excuse to get out of, uh, Atlanta to move to Nashville. And really all I ever wanted to do is to be in a band and play music for a living. And, uh, I went to Belmont university and walked on campus and went to the, you know, the registration table, you know, you got your mom and dad with you, you know? And uh, you go up to the registration table and I'm, I'm checking in, you know, or doing whatever, whatever you're doing. And um, this dude turns around. And he's like, hey, are you Jordan? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, I'm Adam. I'm your roommate. Wow. Like, cool. And uh, from that point forward, we've been inseparable. Um, we've, we've lived a lot of life together. You know, we've uh we've had we've shared a lot of the same jobs we've been roommates we've lived in the same house with a lot of guys we've done a lot of tours we've been in bands together we've toured together um we've you know we've watched each other get married now we've watched each other have kids you know he's got a little boy and i've got a little girl and uh yeah i mean we've we've lived a lot of life together and part of that life was was being in other bands we were in a band uh in our 20s um for about uh eight years um, so we did that. It's crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've been, uh, best friends in, in musical 
musical brothers for um, a long, long time. Wow, dude! Whenever, whenever you said that, I'm like, you know, it, it's it's just pretty incredible to to realize about how you know, especially in these moments, like God could be ordering your steps, like, mm-hmm. you know, years and years ago. You know, and yeah. it's, like, it's like, man, who, absolutely. You know, like who would have thought, you know, walking on the campus that this is some guy that uh, you guys can live a life together um, and then, you know, walk into a ministry together. I mean, because literally, you know, oh, yeah. with, with what you guys are doing, it's like, man, you know, that's pretty incredible. And then for you guys to be able to put up with each other for that long through, you know what I mean? Like all those things. And it's yeah. like, oh, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. It, I mean, yeah. It, it, praise God that we we've been able to put up with each other for as long as yeah that we, we we have and, and and God has definitely been um you know I, I like to say that when I was seventeen and eighteen years old those were like two of the most providential years of my life where God really because I I met my wife when I was seventeen years old and then a year later I met Adam when I was eighteen years old and it's like now you know I'm I'm still married and and we have a kid now and and adam and i are still going strong it's just like yeah i'm really glad i'm really grateful uh that the lord brought those people into my life when i was that young and dumb yeah <laughs> man, i mean it's the truth yeah man i i just love those um you know type of stories just knowing that like even if you're not uh necessarily you know like if your trajectory the way that you see it isn't that pathway you know, mm-hmm. you're just following. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, like this all makes sense. Like, I totally understand, you know, yeah. how we, you know, all these things happen. So, yeah, I mean, dude, that, that yeah. is absolutely um, incredible. Um, do you remember the first song you ever wrote? I do, actually. Was it good? I did. No, it was terrible. It was horrible. <laughs> Wait, you can't ask a songwriter that question. Oh, it was the first but, song you ever wrote a good song. Of yeah. course it wasn't, but I was excited about it for a long time. Yeah. So, um, it, no, yeah, I, it, was, uh, it was, of course it was a terrible song. Um, but uh, it was a catchy little number, and it was called, uh, uh, I think it was called Happy or something like that, Happy Song or I, something like that. Um, looking back on it, it probably wasn't, uh, the greatest piece of American creative literature, but you know, it got the ball rolling. Right, 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 right. In the right direction. Right. It was step one. Like there might've been many steps, but it was step one. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Oh man. Yeah. That that is is awesome. Um, no, I, so do do you, are, are you an iPhone guy? I am. So do you have Apple music? I do have Apple Music, but I'm actually a Spotify. Okay, user. so so what is your um, Spotify playlist right now? Like, what 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 is your number uh, one jam? Oh man, well, that's a that's a great question. Um, They're so awesome. I don't know. know. <laughs> I, I well, no, no, I you know, man, I listen to music. I listen to a lot of music. Right. Um. So I I mean, here here, here hold on a second. I'll tell you right now. I know that I'm. I know that I'm. I'm paused. That's all right. They can all see your name. Okay, there we go. Um, it, it it just looks like you're all about yourself. The right last now. the last record that I've listened to nonstop was. Um, I mean, honestly, I I just I know I'm late to the game, but that Lauren Daigle record is phenomenal. Um, but I've listened to uh, George Harrison. He was in the Beatles. I mean, I don't know if you've heard of him. I, I listen to a lot of hip hop too. I mean, I listen, I listen to. Uh, heard of I know, I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay, all right. I was I'm like, just joking. Okay, I'm well, okay. So sometimes it's like, dude, I know you're in a band, and you think it's like, man, I just know so much more than you probably don't. No, know this. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm joking. Uh, okay, okay. No, um, man, I, I, I listen. I literally, man, I listen to, ev- like, I listen to a lot of stuff. So, do, do you listen to Christian hip hop at all? Um, man, a little bit, a little bit of the basics. Uh, we, we produced actually a dude last, uh, last year, two years ago. Um, a guy named Joshua Luke Smith, who is a, a hip hop artist from the UK who does a lot of, um, uh, Christian hip hop. 
sort of the, the rap is very faith centered, um, brilliant artist, one of the best records that I've been able to be a part of. Um, but yeah, man, I mean like Andy Minio and, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I know a lot of those dudes, um, a lot of their music rather. Um, it's really good stuff. And yeah, I mean, I listen, like I said, I listen to just about everything. So who would you want to collab with in Christian hip hop? If you could right now, man, I, I've honestly, I know I just mentioned it, but Andy's probably one of those guys that like, so Andy Minio, uh, if you're watching, hit this dude up on Instagram right now and yeah, say, "Hey, yeah, bro, yeah. let's uh, get a let's." I've got some beats, man. I've got some tracks. Yes. Actually, we, we have we we have a lot of the we have a lot of the people who who uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. So I, I, hopefully we can we can make that happen, bro. I would love to see that happen. I'm gonna go on an Apollo LTD and Andy Minio like campaign starting right now from now on Do until it. I Do hear it. it. Like, man, what is up? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You know, I'm I'm actually being dead serious though. <laughs> Watch right after Here this. Go. Here yeah, we go. yeah, it'll be like, hey, and then guess who put it together? You. This guy. Yeah, you made it happen. You make you're making dreams come true, brother. Yeah, I know. That's one of the things um that that, that I try to do. Uh let, let me ask this. Um as far as your uh listening habits, are are you a podcast guy? Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. what, uh, what, what is your favorite podcast right now? Top two. Oh goodness. Mm. Um, I know I'm just putting you on the spot, man. It's just question. No, question, man, question. it's all good. It's all good. I, so it just depends on what I'm in the mood for. So I went through the, like the whole true crime thing a long time ago. Haven't really gone back. I'm kind of over that. I know a lot of people still love it. My wife still likes it. I, it's just too dark for me. Like yeah. I'm like, especially during a global pandemic, I'm like, I don't need more death and dying in my life i need bright i need wisdom i need some knowledge bombs um man i listen to uh goodness i every I, the Brene brown and locking us podcast uh listen to a podcast called nomad um i love um i listen to goodness you put me on the spot here i fantasy footballers podcast come on man yeah i love me some fantasy football couple different one of those i listen to a formula one podcast i mean i i, I literally like for every aspect of my life there's a, a podcast called songcraft that i listen to um a good friend of mine hosts that he gets to interview a bunch of awesome songwriters and and he talks about that um uh this dude ross golan has a podcast that's really good it's a songwriting one um you know it's so everything from you know um there's christian and faith ones that i listen listen to you know i mean i listen to a lot of pastors the tim keller stuff is really good um and and then i listen to sports and then i and then uh, uh wpln has one called um oh you're putting me on the spot um uh, something lab uh not stereo lab uh i just there's so many it's just right there what's dude. it called just reach out and grab it just it's on the tip of my it. tongue it doesn't matter yeah it's it's all good but yeah um it's i I, do, I listen to tons of stuff i listen to a lot of different oh uh freakonomics is a great um that's just an economics podcast that's kind of like where i nerd out um and then hidden brain is another one um i listen to it's a kind of science based just really interesting stuff talks about psychology and so you're things, always yeah. listening to something essentially like with music with podcasts you're always putting something in I, there's always input, man. I mean, I'm always eating or listening to podcasts. Um, I just started this book, Permission to Feel, um, uh, which I'm really loving. Um, yeah, man. I, I honestly, musically, I'm always listening to music, um, but I do it in here a lot. I do it in the studio a lot. But when I'm out and about, if I'm you know, going to the grocery store or I'm going for a walk or going for a run. A lot of times I will listen to either a book, um, yeah. a book on uh, 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 audible or I'll listen to a podcast. Yeah. Um, for just me, cause it's kind of a nice break for me. Yeah. And I, I've actually gotten really big into um, listening um, to books. Uh, as a matter of fact, oh, yeah. uh, audible had the whole like, 
oh, if you, you know, if you don't like a book, exchange it, blah, blah, blah. Or if you're never going to read it again, you can exchange it. Well, I got to the point where then they're like, hey, to exchange this book, you can, but you have to call this 1-800 number and sit in line, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, nah, I think I'm done with that subscription. Um, So, you know, I, I pretty much ran that thing into the ground. Like I was like, you know, 13 books in within like the first month. You know, and I'm yeah. like, I'm like, dude, well, you know what I'm doing? I'm doing, you know, all, all the latest books, just trying to see if there's something like some little nugget that I can, uh, you know, like put into a, a sermon or a video or, you know, something like that. So it's really just one of those things that uh, for me, um, the, the world has changed. You know, like you used to in order to get knowledge, like you had to be like concentrated right there or else it wasn't happening. Yeah. You know, and now it's like there's yeah. like things are so accessible. Music is so accessible, you know, and, and, and I'm like, golly, uh, I, I always laugh because, you know, teachers back in the day. How old are you? I'm 33. Okay, so 33. So I'm, I'm 36. So, so we're about the same age. Uh, they, they, no, I'm not going to put those three years on you. Um, they used to talk <laughs> about like back in the day, you know, like you were always going to have a calculator with you. You aren't always going to have an encyclopedia with you. You are all like all the things that my teachers told me back in the day have all become like false. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all yeah. false. Like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. I have Google now. Google is better than your encyclopedia. You know why? Because you have to change. You have to turn the pages. We're, the scary thing is we've all become these little walking cyborgs with our, with our phones attached to our, you know, literally our phones are attached to us at all. Times. Right. It's crazy. Yeah, Yeah, I know. And so it's like awesome. But then I also see, you know, going into that, like my students especially do like social media is good for what it is. Like, it's awesome, you know, that we can do something like this, but man, social media can be brutal, you know, you know, like it can be really, really damaging. And so I'm like, man, go ahead. Yeah. I, man, I, I, I can tell that sociologically, emotionally, um, social media does more harm <laughs> most of the time. Most of the time, it does more harm than good. Yeah, it's like when we look back on the history of of social media and the proliferation of it over the course of the past ten years, kind of the the social media boom, if you will, which is what we're living through. Right. I think we'll we'll look we 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 will see a bit of a dichotomy. That and and th- what I'm saying is there's going to be the good and the bad that are in the, like inevitable the right. things that we can't overlook. So like we look at things like in the early 2000s with um, like the Arab Spring, for instance, you know, with like the the um, w- with like the the fall of Gaddafi in Libya and all these places where literally these uprisings happened and these um, people were able to overthrow their government. It was because of Twitter. It yeah. was a social media platform that literally all these people connected and orchestrated and rallied together. And then they overthrew their government and they changed their world in their country. That is, that is a good thing, right? Right. Social media that's able to defeat, um, uh, you know, um, oppressive forms of government. Okay. That's it. We'll we'll put that in the good column, (laughs) in the pro column. And, And then, and then in the negative column, we just have, how I, I just honestly, the anxiety that I see social media causing your average person, including me, you know, depression, anxiety, um, honestly, like jealousy, envy, all those things that are come from just watching people's highlight reels every day. Yeah. We're seeing curated lives you know what i'm saying no like if the only thing that i ever let you see if the only thing i ever let you see was just this uh sort of picture perfect um illusion of my life you'd be like dang jordan lives a pretty amazing life like every time i look he's eating great food and you know his house is always really clean and he's always really well dressed and like i'm in sweatpants and like i'm still laying in bed and and i haven't done 100 push-ups before 30 a.m. and golly and, and who knows if those things are actually happening who knows if i'm actually doing those things but right. that's what i'm putting out to the world A push-up position then, but no push-ups <laughs> right exactly it's posturing 
It's posturing. And we've gotten used to that posturing as, and we just accept it as other people's realities. And then we look at our own reality and our own lives and our own, you know, whether it's like doing a hundred pushups before 5.30 a.m. that we look at our own physique and go, oh man, I wish I was, I wish I had that. Man, I wish my house was that clean. Man, I wish I traveled that much. And man, I wish I ate as good as, as Jonathan eats, man. He's always at these amazing restaurants and cooking up these amazing meals for his wife. Their marriage must be perfect. And the truth is, is your life, just like my life, is, is just as much of a mess as everybody else's. Yeah. It has the good and the bad, right? Yeah. And so that's the part of it that I, I social media that I struggle with is because it kind of this these false realities about our lives and and i and i'm i'm grateful that there's more and more of this movement to like post real pictures you right. know um and 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 be a little bit more genuine because i think that it's important for young people you know and i'm sure you can attest to this as a, as a youth pastor it's really important that we teach we're a part of teaching and affirming young people that their lives have meaning and value right. just as they are and that we can strive to better ourselves and to be great at what we do. But it's for the effort of, but all of that effort is so that we're just magnifying the name of, of Jesus and not because we're trying to earn approval from other people or from God. We're trying to earn approval from God or we're trying to earn respect so that we can respect ourselves. That's not why we do good things. We do good things because it glorifies God when we do good things and we can rejoice and, and, and God is, is, is glorified in that. Um, you want to come preach sometime, so bro? Comparison. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I know. I look, I deal with this. I deal with, I'm being real. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I deal with this every day because I know that as a band, um, social media is part of our career yeah it's a part of what we do and you know we go on tour and we have a label that posts pictures and all this you know and 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 i often wonder like there have been times in my life where i've been down where i feel like i've been just kind of like down in the dirt about stuff you know maybe things aren't going well and you get on and you see somebody else that's like when selling out an arena or somebody else that just bought a new house or somebody else that just cooked an amazing meal. You know what I'm saying? And we immediately go to comparison and we compare our lives to theirs, man. And, and it's just like, uh, what is the old saying? Uh, the old adage, I think it's CS Lewis that comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. And, and it's like, dude, it's in so many ways, social media is at the heart and the root of, comparison that steals a lot of people's joy in in our generation and i think it's i think it's a bummer yeah like frankly. so so one of the things that i was actually thinking about yesterday um is that there's been a skewed view of what quality is quality is based and determined upon likes and shares versus quality of music so if mm -hmm. if, if somebody else has you know a million views or a hundred thousand likes or whatever well, then that means that their music is better. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at this going like, no, not even close. If you listen to the music that has the most shares that have, for the most part, it's the exact opposite. It's like, no, this person yeah. outside of their music is doing something to uh, gain attraction and go viral. But the music itself, which is what I'm looking for and what I'm listening for, yeah. Yeah. isn't there. And I'm yeah. like, I get that you want to watch them on TV. Okay, cool. Give them a reality show. Totally yeah. get it. But don't put that nonsense in my ears. You know what I'm saying? Or I don't put the nonsense in my ears, yeah. I guess you should, you know, I, I should say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, anyway, we took a right turn, but. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, no. That, yeah. That, that's actually fantastic. Um, So let me ask this, and this is another right, uh, right turn question. What is your favorite energy drink, dude? You're you're Energy on tour, drink? you're on tour, you're an hour before the show, and you just are dying, and there's no coffee around. What is there's the no first? Coffee around? No, no, no coffee around. I know you guys are looking well, at coffee whenever you're at, uh, you know, with us. There's no coffee yeah. around. 
where do you reach? Well, I'm not. So truth be told, I'm not much of an energy drink drinker. What? But if I'm going to do something in a pinch, it's going to be a five hour, five hour, five energy. hour, five hour energy. Huh? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I mean, just because there's not like an insane amount of caffeine in five hours and right. I had it and you don't crash. So I, I would support that, but I'm, I'm mainly a caffeine, uh, uh, like a coffee drinker. If I need caffeine, I'm, I'm going to drink some coffee. Yeah. And so I, I'm the type of person that in order to avoid the crash, I have the solution. You throw more in before you crash. I, I, I've heard that works you know, until, it, uh, you know, until the, the whole like heart explodes thing. Oh yeah, I know, golly. You know, I, and and like as a student pastor, that kind of like enters my mind sometimes. Like, am I setting the best example with this? Uh, so we 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 went to um forward last year, which dude, you guys need to play forward conference. By the way, it's it's phenomenal, and you guys are phenomenal. Right it, it, it would just work perfect. Um, but anyway. So I go and I buy this, you know, energy drink. And then one of my students goes to buy it and they can't. They're carding for the energy drink. They're carding? Carding. Because on the can it says, that, and it was brand new, on the can it said 18 plus. Wow. So in, I think it was Kentucky or Tennessee or whatever, we were actually being, my students were being carded. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, for an energy drink. And then it's like, Hey, uh, pastor Jonathan, will you buy this for me? You're like, um, uh, in the next state, maybe. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, because I'm like, so bizarre. Yeah. I know. Like t talk about being put in the, in, in the wrong or, or, or a bad position. Um, yeah. well, you know, I'm like, man, that, that what, I mean, it's a cool story. But if a parent gets upset at me for that, like I could totally see them having a legitimate like, bro, why did you do that? You know what I mean? If they yeah, buy it themselves yeah, yeah. and I mean, they if, get in if, the van, that's on if them. The nutritional content, if the nutritional content of, of the drink, it makes it necessary to card people. It's like, well, I wonder what's going on in that. That's why I just stick to coffee, man. Right, right. I'll just deal with I'll just deal with the crash. Yeah. I'll reboot. Like I had my I had my morning coffee. Yeah. And around two this afternoon, I'll have another another coffee. And uh that'll carry me through. Yeah, that that's just Somehow. like our pastor. For for me this morning, I started off with coffee, then I hit one of these and I'm like, oh, hopefully this will get me through. I'm really not trying to be I'm really not trying to be a uh a um I don't know, a, a loser, a nerd about this, but Honestly, I have found that if I'm tired, if I drink serious, and I'm serious, if I drink okay. a ton of water, like if I hydrate myself, I'm already like, no, I'm telling you, I feel better. <laughs> I feel better. I don't know. I mean, uh, okay. I mean it's not going to always work. Okay. So, but so if I come down to Nashville sometime and, and, and we hang out and you're like, man, I'm crashing. I'm going to go, Hey bro, I got you. I'm going to go into the gas station. I'm going to grab a bottle of Dasani and not, I'm going to bring not a bottle. I'm talking like a liter. Okay. Like you got a pound. Hey, you know what? Call a liter it. and a half of water. Call it. What, what, whatever it is, I'll bring it to you. And then I'll be like, Hey man, I got this energy drink or I got this coffee here. Here's a liter and a half of water. You're good. I drink so much water, bro. <laughs> I, I can't, I cannot sit in a middle seat or a window seat on an airplane because you have, I have to, get up? to sit on an aisle. I, I, I have to sit on an aisle because at any given point I have so much water in my system that it is only a matter of 30 minutes before I'm going to have to go pee. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> it's just, it's, that, that's just it. That, that, like, that, that's I, just who you are. Adam, I drive Adam crazy when we travel. Because if we're like doing a radio promo thing and we're traveling around, we do a lot of driving for those, you know, yeah. we'll just like, just, we'll just be him and I, or him and I and a label rep. And we'll just be driving radio stations for weeks. I can't be in the car for more than an hour. I like, guys, I got, I got to stop. I, cause I drink so much water, but I'm telling you, I, water makes you feel better. So why don't you have a liter and a half of water with you now instead of that cup of coffee? <laughs> cause I already drank it. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that is... I pounded it while we were figuring out all the tech stuff before we started up this podcast. I know. And you know what? It didn't even work because they can't hear me. Bro, yeah. like, what? <laughs> so now, so now I'm water deprived. I'm coffee deprived. You're trying to kill me is what you're trying to do. Yeah. And, it's all right. And, and again, they're like, what is, what is Jonathan saying right now? I have no idea. I people, see and people don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just kidding. It's all good. <laughs> hey, people, but, dude, people are going to think I'm crazy. Uh, no, no, that that's actually fantastic. Well, uh, let, let's hop into this um, new music because I, I know I want to be respectful of, of, of your time. Um, but so you guys have a new single out, right? Yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this new single? Well, actually, as of a week ago, we released a new, new song. Uh, um, but I know the one that you're referring to is our current single to radio right now, and it's called You. Yeah. Um, and um, it's funny, man. Like, I, I mean, I don't know if you, you intended to do this, but it was a good segue from what we were talking about with social media. Um, we wrote you because we needed to write a song that spoke to our own hearts and you know as a songwriter the goal is to write as a songwriter you're taught and it's intrinsic that we want to write songs that change people's or helps people changes people's lives or is a par- small part of uh, you know is the soundtrack to people's lives You want to write a song that affects people. But the the truth is, is that sometimes you need to write songs that help change us. And I think that you is a song that we needed to hear a lot in our lives. And, um, you know, like we were talking about earlier with social media, man, it's so easy to... um, um, live our lives and look, view other people's lives through social media and just compare, compare, com- compare, compare. And it really uh, robs us of a lot of joy. And it, I think, causes us to forget that we were each created uniquely and individually by God in the image of God. We're all image bearers and that we all have a story to tell. We all have a conversation to have with the world that God has called us to, and that there is a beauty to us that is intrinsic and is undeniable, and that God loves us, each and every single one of us uniquely, as we are, not as we should be. And I think that you is a song that is about those things. It's a song that stands in protest to the lies that say we aren't worth it, we aren't valuable, we aren't interesting. We don't have anything to say. We don't have anything to contribute to the kingdom of God. Uh, You is a song that stands in direct contradiction to those lies. Um, And it was a song, frankly, man, that I have needed to hear in my life. And uh, so we were able to somehow reach up and grab it and pull it down. And it's one of our favorites. I'll I'll, I'll be... um... You know, perfectly honest. One, I am super picky about the music that I like. Like, mo- yeah. like mo- most people will say, "Oh man, they like everything," uh, or "Man, I just love this genre." Right? And for me, I don't love genres. I love good quality music. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, th- there's about, and I'm, I'm not trying to like, you know, inflate your head or anything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but there's about like. I can name on one hand Christian bands that I really feel like are dope. Like not just yeah. from the uh, standpoint of Christian music, but like, no, you know, this is dope. Like to me, yeah. it's like third day, incredible rock band. Right. I think you guys are amazing for King and country. And there's not many on the list after that. Like that, that, like mm-hmm. that, that, that's just yeah. me being real. You know, yeah. in that. So, so whenever I first heard this song, bro, the spirit was speaking to me because I'm like, man, this is mm. a song that not just you, but like my students need. 
Like, mm. like, like this generation, like genuinely needs this song. Like, I firmly believe that, dude. I was feeling like mm. Holy Spirit goosebumps listening to this. Mm. And then I was reminded of the time that whenever someone, uh, you know, was kind of like, and I know we talked about this before the podcast, um, but I was reminded of the time whenever someone was like, man, we should have, you know, whatever. And then afterwards, Man, that boy can really sing, man. Have you heard that? And I'm like, um, well, so I did everything that had to do with the booking, right? Yeah. I knew that he could sing. Like, if I thought that they were terrible, <laughs> guess what? We wouldn't have brought them in. Like, what do you mean? Yes, I already knew that. I was not surprised, right? Like, zero part of me was surprised. Now, did you guys crush it? Yes. Did you surpass expectation 100%? But at the same time, I'm like... But did I already know that dude could sing? Yes, totally. Totally knew that. So anyway, I, I just want to say, man, Thanks, that, man. Th 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 this song really touched me and more. It, 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 it was like, it touched me in a way that like I knew that this was something for my students. I knew this was mm. something for uh, something bigger than just, oh, I'm enjoying listening to this. You know what I'm right saying? On, man. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. with that being Thanks. said, if you don't mind, dude, let's go ahead and uh, just check out the song. Is, is that cool yeah, with man. you? All right. Let's, Absolutely. All right. Let's do it. Have you ever felt like you just couldn't be yourself? Like it'd be easier if you were someone else. Is there a voice inside your mind that reminds you of? Time the ways you're broken Has it left you hopeless? It can be a hard, hard thing Just being alive It can be a dark, dark thing When you're trying to hide Every story, every sky You love the way you
Bro, you made that. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Somehow. Man, bro, incredible. Incredible. I'm telling Thanks, you. And trust me, Thank um, I, I'm I know man, I'm not gonna use that word. If you were horrible, I would tell you. You know, well, like, like, I- like, well, like, if I were horrible, I, I hope that you wouldn't call me on your podcast. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm joking. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, dude, because I, I truly just think that, man, just that concept right now is so needed. And I feel like that that is a that, that is a song that's not worship, but definitely inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, man, I appreciate being able to hear that music. I appreciate being able to share that, you know, with other people and be like, man, if you're feeling some, like, the the way all of us are right now, dude, here's a song for you, like, especially in those down seasons. Um, so, man, I, I, I just want you to know, and I'm being dead serious whenever I say, man, I appreciate that and thank you for pouring your heart out. And not only that, being vulnerable with it. You know, like, because sometimes people are all about the flash. It's like, oh, this sounds good. Oh, and it's like, no, I struggle with this. So here's a song, um, you know, that it, that helps yeah. me get through. So here's something to get you through. So um, yeah. let, let me, and, and we're going to stop, or we're going to start winding this down. So let me ask this. What would be one yeah. thing that you would tell a student who is going through, uh, or anyone actually for that matter, that's going through something like this, um, that is really vibing and connecting with this song, what is some advice that you would give them spiritually in order to push through in this time? Loaded question, I know. You, you have nothing to prove. You have nothing to prove to God. The fact that you are who you are is a miracle. And that in the grand master plan the grand scheme of god's creation uh we are experiencing life and it's like a symphony and each and every single one of us has a note to play and our short finite time that we have on planet earth is the time we have to figure out what note it is that we're going to play. But all of us doing it together is what gives life to the beautiful symphony that is the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And so it took me a long time for me to really fully believe in my heart that God loves me for who I am and not as I should be. And I think that we spend our lives trying to earn forgiveness. I think we spend a lot of our lives trying to earn um, good standing. And we try to earn acceptance. And I believe that if we read the Bible, the Bible teaches us that the gift is the offering of abundant life through Christ. And so. Yeah, I don't think we have anything to prove. And I think that if we can really fully believe that God loves us as we are and not as we should be, um, it gives us a a far greater capacity to accept the gift of grace and salvation that comes to us uh, through Jesus' death and resurrection. Man, that's powerful, dude. That's, That's real powerful. I'm... You know, because uh, obviously I, I have a, a, a heart for um, you, you. You can't live the past that I've had and not have a heart for the lost. And yes. so another thing that I really appreciate is I feel like that the song that you guys just put out is not pandering to the already saved necessarily. Um, mm-hmm. But it's like, hey, you know what? God sees you, you know, regardless sure. of, 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 of where you're at. And so, yeah. man, again, that like, I, I'm a, dude, I can play this song anywhere. Uh, hey, you guys yeah. want to hear an awesome song, save, not save, whatever. Hey, guess what? Let, let's go ahead and uh, put yeah. this in. Tell me what you think. And I guarantee you that regardless yeah. of where people are at, that that will speak to them. And, dude, this is a, like, to me, this is a classic Christian, non-Christian, whatever it is, track. And, man, I just man, hope that it just I, explodes. I appreciate it, man. 
man, if I can, and if I can say just one more sure. thing, I, as we, as we, as we're living life in this, this period, this really strange, um, season of life. Right. Um, I, I look at this as like the first time that we're globally all collectively together in this season of what we would consider suffering, whether it's economic suffering or, uh, spiritual suffering or physical suffering, those that have been sick or whatever. Um, I think that, um, it's important for us to remember that God is with us in our suffering. Yep. And, and through this time of trial and tribulation will come a redemptive faith that is more abundant and fuller than ever before. If we choose to lean into, um, God's providential wisdom in our lives. And I think that, um, honestly, we somehow tried to connect that also in, in you. It's a hard thing being alive sometimes, you know, and, and, and this coming from a dude who, um, has what a lot of people are aspiring for, right? If I just got that deal, if I just mm. did that crap, if I just did that, that would make me happy. That would make me whole. That right. right there is what I need. So that's what I love that. Like you can speak on that and say, no, that's yeah. not all you need. I got that. And I need more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can pursue, you can pursue earthly success. You can pursue material possessions. You can pursue power, wealth. Um, those things don't sustain your spirit like our faith does. And, and it takes a lot of us, a lot. It takes some, some people longer than others. Um, but yeah, God is with us in our suffering. And, um, I have all the faith in the world that out of this period of, of trial, uh, will come, um, a season of abundance for all of us, man. So Dude, that's awesome. So, uh, two two more things, and then I'll I'll let you get out of here. Yeah. Uh, one, who's your Super Bowl pick this year? Super Bowl pick. All right. Uh, who do I want the Super Bowl to be? The Atlanta Falcons. There you go. They will not be in this. They will not be in the Super Bowl. My Super Bowl pick for uh, twenty twenty is going to be probably uh, the Tampa Bay Gronkineers. Oh no. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't know. I, it's too early to tell, man. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. There's a lot. There's a lot happening in the NFL right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So w- one last thing, and then um, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and I'll, I'll let you get out of here. Um, but uh, where can everyone find your music at? Social media. Uh, you, you look up Apollo. Yeah, Apollo Ltd. We're on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Pandora. Name all that stuff. You know. Um, but you can find us on Instagram at Apollo Grams. Uh, search us on Facebook, Apollo LTD. Um, we are Apollo on TikTok. Every once in a while, I'll make a video on there just goofing around. So, yeah, we're everywhere. All right, man. Well, hey, look, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know I've taken up an hour of your time, actually a little bit more than that. But, dude, I just want you to know um, – that actually, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this off, and then once we finish up the broadcast, I want to pray with you if that's all right. Yeah. All sure, right. Man. So, guys, um, for those of you that are tuned in, I will be posting the audio because you didn't hear any of it. Um, so I will get that to you guys soon, and then uh, we're out. We really appreciate you. God bless, and I will see you soon on the Generation Now podcast. See you guys. <laughs>